Good morning, everyone. Mr. Cortina here with your daily math lesson. Today is Wednesday, April 1st. Happy first day of April. And today we're going to be adding mixed numbers and fractions. Uh, some materials you're going to need are a pencil and a notebook or a piece of paper. As a reminder, you can always pause the video, stop, go back, and rewatch. Keep a lookout for these symbols at the bottom of the page so you know when to watch, when to do work with me, and when to do work on your own. Let's have a look at today's learning target. I can add mixed numbers and fractions. Let's do it together. I can add mixed numbers and fractions. Great. So this lesson is important today that you've done the previous two lessons. Um, because in those first two lessons, we talked about what those mixed numbers are. And we also had some practice adding fractions. But today is a little different because we're adding mixed numbers. Okay, let's look at an example of what we're doing. So we're going to add parts and holes to find a total. Okay, so here's an example. So if Brad drank two and one fourth cups of water, and Steffi drank one and two fourths cups of water. I want to know how much water they drank all together. Let me point out first that this fraction looks a little bit different. We're used to seeing fractions written like this. But on the computer, it's just a little bit easier to type them out like this, but they mean the same exact thing. So whenever you might need to do fractions on a computer, you can show fractions by doing the number with a slash followed by another number. Okay, so how much water did they drink total? We're going to combine these numbers to find the total. So what operation are we going to use? Adding, that's right, and it was in our target. So we're going to take our mixed numbers. We're going to copy them down. Right now you're just watching and listening. And we're going to add them to find the total. So the way we do that is to first start by adding the whole numbers in the mixed number. So we have 2 is the whole number in this mixed number, and 1. So when you combine 2 and 1, we're adding 2 plus 1 gives us what? That's right, 3. So together they drank three full glasses of water, but they also drank a little bit more. So Brad drank one-fourth of a cup more, and Steffi drank two-fourths a cup more. So we're just going to take those fractions, and you're all familiar with the process for adding fractions, and we add across the top, and leave the bottom number the same. So two plus one is three. And then our total part stays the same. And we're going to take this new fraction we just made and combine it to make a mixed number that represents the total amount of water that Brad and Steffi drank. Three and three quarter cups. Okay. So as long as you can add and we've been working with fractions, this lesson should be pretty easy for you guys. There are gonna be a few tricky parts that you might run into, and we're gonna go over what those look like now. So let's practice. Grab your notebook and your pencil, and let's do this one together. So I see we have an addition equation, and we have four and three tenths over here, and over here we have six and two tenths. So our first step is to do what? That's right, we're going to add the whole numbers. So we have 4 and 6. We're going to just combine those. So 4 plus 6 equals, that's right, 10. And then when we add our fractions, we simply add the numerators. 3 and 2 is 5. And our whole parts stays the same. So 10 and 5 tenths. Is there anything you notice about this 
mixed number that we just made. That's right. We can do something to this 5 tenths to make it a little bit easier to understand. If you remember from the previous lesson, we learned how to reduce fractions to the lowest terms. Whenever you have a final answer, you should always try to reduce it into lowest terms or simplify it. So the way we did that best was by finding the greatest common factor or the number that can be multiplied into each of these numbers or divided. So we're gonna start by listing our numbers. We have five and 10, and we're just gonna find the factors. These are numbers that multiply to get this number. So I know one is always a factor, and that multiplies by five. So five only has two factors. Let's look at 10. We can multiply one to get 10, one times 10. We can multiply two, two times five, and those are the four factors of 10. So now we're finding what's called the what? That's right, the greatest common factor is five. It's a number they both have in common. So that's what we're going to divide by to simplify this fraction. The whole number is gonna stay the same. So we can just carry that over. The only thing we're doing is changing this fraction into an easier fraction to understand. So we're gonna divide each one by our GCF of five. So five divided by five is what? That's right, one. And 10 divided by five is, that's right, two. So our answer reduced to simplest form is 10 and one half. Nice job. Let's try another practice problem together. We have three and five eighths plus one and six eighths. Let's go ahead and do our first step. What are we gonna do? You got it, we're gonna add these whole numbers. So we have three plus one gives us what? Four. Let's combine our fractions. We have five eighths plus six eighths. What's five plus six? That's right. 11. And then our 8 stays the same. So we're left with 4 and 11 eighths. What do you notice about this mixed number? It looks a little funny to me. What do you notice? That's right, 11 eighths. That's an improper fraction. And our final answers we cannot leave as improper fractions. So we need to convert this improper fraction into a mixed number. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave this four sit for a little bit. This four, we're gonna set to the side and we're gonna come back to it. Right now we're gonna take this 11 eighths and we're gonna convert it into a mixed number. Who remembers how to convert improper fractions into mixed numbers? That's right. We could either draw a tape diagram, we could skip count, or we could divide. As I've said with these bigger fractions, sometimes it gets a little bit tricky to try to draw the fraction tape, tape fraction because there's a lot of parts. So instead, we're gonna try to divide or skip count. So I'm gonna use my divide method. Remember, this line means to divide, so I'm dividing 11 divided by eight. So let's do that work over to the side. 11 divided by eight. How many times can eight go into 11 without going over? Well, if I skip count, eight, 16, whoops, 16 is more than 11. So eight can only go into 11 one time. And then we're gonna continue with our division process. One times eight is eight. And we're going to subtract to get, that's right, three and there's no numbers to bring down, so this is our remainder. So our new mixed number is one whole with three left over out of eight. 
Okay, so we just created a mixed number. What do we do with this mixed number now? Well, we left our other hole over here. So we have a hole plus a mixed number, and we're still adding. So we're going to go back and combine this new mixed number with the hole that we had previously. And again, we're just adding through the same process. We're going to start with the holes. So we have 4 plus 1 equals 5. And then there's no other fraction to add. So all we need to do is just move this fraction on over to join our 5. And our final answer is 5 and 3 eighths. And I know that this can't be reduced anymore because I know that there's no number that can divide into 3 and 8. That's the same number. So we're going to leave it as it is. It's simplified and reduced into lowest terms. Now it's your turn. You're going to solve the equation and write your answer in simplest form. Pause the video, do your work, and then check your answers. Great, let's see how you did. So if you combined the whole numbers and the fractions, you should have gotten 9 and 10 twelfths. Yours might have looked a little bit different. You could have probably written it like this, and that's okay. They're the same fraction. Great. If you got to that point, you did great. But we noticed that this fraction is not in lowest terms. 10 and 12 are both even numbers, so we could have divided by a common number, the greatest common factor, and reduce this fraction into something that's a little bit easier to understand. So our process for that would be to skip count, or find the factors, I'm sorry, we're not skip counting, we're finding the factors, and we're finding the greatest common factor. So if we got to this step, you would have realized that the greatest common factor for both numbers is two. So you would have divided both of these numbers, top and bottom, by two, you always have to do the same number to top and bottom. And you would have got your final answer of 9 and 5 sixths. Nice job. Let's review. I can add mixed numbers and fractions. Well, we just did that. We added mixed numbers and we also added fractions from our previous slide. We added a whole number plus a mixed number. So our summary for today is we can combine mixed numbers and fractions by adding the holes first and then adding the fraction parts. When we're done with that, we need to turn improper fractions into mixed numbers and then add again. And then we need to reduce our fraction into lowest terms if we can. Sometimes it'll already be in lowest terms, so you might not need to do this step. Always think to yourself, can I make this number smaller by dividing by a common factor? And if you can, make it smaller. Thanks for tuning in today's lesson. You have your problem set on your Google Slides. Please complete that and submit it when you're done. Have a great rest of your day.